Understand, if you lose, I want my money. Mm -hmm. Some cats yep. will walk away from it, but he ain't one of them guys. I got to respect that. Same here, man. Same here. Let's get to some questions in the chat. Shout out to everybody in the chat, and please hit that like button. Uh, Meek Marketing Live says, hey, Lonzo, do you know any history on Top Dog TDE? Thanks, Godfather. Man, That's what? Kendrick Lamar uh, and all them. Right. Uh, I know he used to live in Carson, and people say I know him, but I, I can't recall. Maybe I know him before he blew up, but I can't recall um, actually kicking it. What did they say? He used to come to Eve after dark. He was from around the Avalon um, Center View area, which is right down the street from the club. He's of the age. I just can't recall them meeting. I haven't laid eyes on him to recall ever talking to him. But no, I'm not okay. going to make those stories up. Okay, okay. This is a good question because I'm a hip hop nerd and I love this shit. Uh, how does an, uh, Miami 808 says, how does an artist get paid for a sample? Oh, shit. Uh, when you have a sample, there's, there's, two, there's two ways you get paid. One, you get paid if they use your actual sample, the actual, they take, they take your record and actually sample that record. You got, they got to get paid for, um, the, the master use and the publishing. Okay. Like Master P did with you, right? Is that a good like, example? Like Master P would did, did okay. with me exactly. Mm -hmm. Now Master P actually replayed my song. He didn't. He didn't. Um, he didn't use my. He didn't use my. Oh, he uh, literally just used the whole damn beat. Right. Um, but when you sample somebody, you know, uh, um, what James Brown or whatever the case may be, you owe them for for the for the uh, master clearance and for the publishing. Now the master clearance is usually owned by the record company, which means. Say so if you want to, uh, just for lack of a better word, if you want to sample something from, from Biggie, you got to go to Big Boy and, I uh, mean, uh, Bad Boy. And depending on the value that Bad Boy determines how long you're going to use that sample, if you only lose it using a small part, they may, man, they may, they can charge you anywhere from 20000 from 5000 to 100000 okay? Um, oh, yeah, samples can get expensive, especially if it was a popular sample by a popular artist and depending on who the artist is. That's why Dre stopped sampling, because they know Dre, because basically what they're asking for is an advance against the sales of the record. Mm. They know Dre put out a record that's going to sell a few million copies. So they mm -hmm. ask you for a fat-ass advance up front so they ain't got to chase your ass down. And it, if it don't do good, they still got their money, okay? So they usually ask you for an advance, the same thing with the publishing, and usually the publisher and the, uh, the uh, copyright holder, the master holder, holder we we'll got probably spent the same amount of money. Half the money from the publisher goes to the writer hmm. or writers, whoever they may be. Okay. Love that shit. And allegedly, Too Short gets $100,000 every time somebody uses his sound. Bitch! And people have paid for it. I know Yo Gotti had it in his song recently, but yeah, apparently um, it, just that one word is worth $100,000. It could be. It could be. It could, mm -hmm. could very possibly be. And that ain't no yeah. lie. So, yeah, yeah. You know, more power to it. You know what? One thing I want to know about, and because there's probably nobody who was sampled more in early hip hop than James Brown, you know, or maybe not early, but like you know, golden era hip hop, I should say, eighties, okay. late eighties, early nineties. Right. Um, how did how did like how does someone get away with sampling so much? But like, or do they just use it like a certain like if you only use two seconds, it's considered a sample, or like how does it work? How were they able to get away with that so much? Man, back in the day, Samson caught people off guard so fast. It was like, huh, what? You did what? And there was no standard for the shit, okay? And a lot yeah. of people wasn't checking for it because a lot of times the salt, the pieces they would use would be so obscure to the actual record but would become the whole track for the new record. Like like a Funky Drummer. Funky Drummer is a number like maybe a... Three to five second, uh, that's it. But you take that song and you quantize it and you cut and paste it enough, you got a whole track. So you may only pay for that one little sample, but because once they hear the song, shit, oh, you took the whole sample and made a track. I want this amount of money now, okay? If I take this usually just for the breakdown or for just for a small part, that may determine a smaller fee. So um, first problem when sampling first came out, drummers uh, samplers changed music forever because that was something that DJs and musicians started. I mean, DJs when DJs became musicians, 
had SP 1200s and a Kai S 1000s, all the different drum uh, sampling machines. And I think the, the uh, SP 1200 was like the first one you could actually sample your own drum machine, your own drum loops and loop them and turn it into to an actual beat. That changed everything. And a lot of these records, you know, they were sampling, man, was 35, 40 years old. So the people who actually owned the publishing or the writers wasn't checking for that shit. They wasn't even paying hip hop no attention. They mm, wasn't paying hip hop no attention. Somebody mm. heard the shit like, wait a minute, man, they that funky drummer. And then they said, oh shit, this it is. And then the lawyers got involved in the shit and they started hitting people, started robbing people, shit, they lost soul. Still ain't cleared all they goddamn sample shit. They, or they just got it cleared or something like that. That's right. Then I sold yeah. had a whole album that was made of nothing but goddamn samples. And um, I think they just got the shit straightened out and uh, to release on, uh, to release the streaming because it was such mm -hmm. a complicated uh, situation. And That's so it, crazy. You know, it's crazy, dude. It's crazy. It's crazy. It, but sampling, it, it was like doing patchwork. Uh, like do patch art, you know, you go get a picture mm. here, picture here, put it together, make a big picture, and that's what the, mm. that's what it came musically. You grab some some funkadelic, some Jane Brown, and mix in some uh, some dramatics or some other shit. Bam, you got a whole nother record, but it's based on somebody else's record, and depending on how much of the sample and what part, um, how what big what, what how much of a part that sample played in the song will determine whether or not you had a uh, you know how much you got paid. Gotcha. And from what I understand, most people wait till the song is a big hit or they wait, you know, till they can get they a little bit more shit. money out of it, right? They don't say <laughs> shit. Man, yep, I, yep. Dude, we didn't say shit to Master P. We didn't say uh -huh. nothing. That, well, by the time he hit me up, it was shit. Fucking uh, uh, damn near a uh, goal. Mm. And uh, just to get me to sign off, shit, I think it was like seventy five, eighty thousand dollars $80,000. Okay. Mm. And then I started getting checks. And them, them nice. got real small all of a sudden, but then I started getting checks. Them checks was good. Oh my! I'm looking for. Please, somebody sample my shit. I need some more. <laughs> my my cousin Lenny Williams. Okay, he tells the story all the time. Lenny Williams um, was working, um, doing clubs, and had a part time job until Kanye sampled his shit. Okay, he told me personally. He says, "Hey, man." Mm. My, I was on the I was on the road doing something. My, my wife said his wife called, said, Lenny, are you sitting down? She said, Wow, everything okay? She said, Everything is fine. Your, your BMI check came today. I said, oh, Okay, yeah. Ed. And he Overnight said, man, celebrity. Man, he said that shit was so damn big, it was maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars. He didn't know. They, yeah. the, the, but they still paid him. You see what I'm saying? He might he might have had somebody repping him on the deal. He might have had Harry Fox. Or somebody else repping his publishing, and when they when, when that shit blew up, they still paid him. He got his cut, and man, he was so goddamn said changed his life forever. Damn, he, he, had, he, had, he got to, he got to quit his job, and he went back to work because not he he was reintroduced to a whole new to a whole new generation. Yeah, yeah, I never knew that song until that uh, Kanye song came out. Yeah. Uh, damn, that's dope, dude. I love hearing shit like that. MVP official TV network shout out to you said uh, did you make money off something for the people song my love is the shit I think they sampled turn off the lights thanks OG did they sample my that the my love is the shit I know that song but is that a sample of your uh... no I understand that turn off the lights is actually another song so I don't start no shit sometimes okay. you leave shit alone okay ah uh, gotcha Sometimes and I, I called about that and leave that motherfucker alone. Okay, don't make up those things. They, <laughs> they use the same. Uh, we, we actually we played turn off the lights. Okay, we replayed it. They did the same thing. Um, they did the same thing to uh, to us that we kind of did in New Birth. So, but, gotcha. uh, say less. So, man, leave it the fuck alone. Just leave it the fuck alone. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the 53 people in the building. We have 53 people in the building, 28 likes. If you guys could please take a second to hit that like button, it'd be much, much appreciated. A uh, couple more questions here. Before we do that, Lonzo, did you have a back in the day segment this week you wanted to do or? Um, no, nah, man, I, I just got in a minute ago. I didn't put it together. Okay. Just want to make sure before we move on. Uh, okay. Ian Moore. Ian Moore says, uh, so where exactly in Compton did 
Dr. Dre live and grow up? Like, what's his address? We're not going to give his address because I'm sure there's someone living there right now, probably. That's not related to Dre, but where, where do you know where in Compton Dre, Dre grew up? Dre, Dre grew up around the corner from Eve After Dark, I think 127th Street, 127th, 128th. Even on 129th, he lived around the corner. So it must have been 100 and, must have been 20, 100, maybe 130th, because it goes back, mm -hmm. the numbers get here going back that way. So it must have been 130th. His grandmother okay. lived over there, okay? His dad lived on my street. His dad lived, his dad lived down the street from me. Now was the first time I was ever introduced to Dre as a little kid. And then um, I didn't see him again until he came to Eve After Dark. By that time, he was living with his grandmother. And I think his mom also lived um, somewhere in Compton. That's where him and Easy got connected at. Um, mm -hmm. that's, that's still a little mystery for me. I know he lived with his grandmother a lot. And she lived on the 130th. Yeah. Okay. She just recently, okay. She just recently passed. And um, she, she just died a few couple of weeks ago. And I know you heard about how Nicole had him served at her funeral. I did hear that. That was something yeah. that I was going to bring up, I think, last week, and we just never got the chance to get to it. Yeah. yeah. He was served oh. at his... Ooh. Served Ooh. at his grandmother's funeral. Ooh, I know that nigga, Ooh. man. Ouch. That should yeah. get me killed, he dog. He, he didn't like that. I know he didn't like that. Uh. But it is what it is, yeah. Doc. What can you say? You know what? Hey, woman scorned and that whole... Whatever that whole saying is, that's all I'm going to leave it at that.